Every once in a while, there comes a time in your life where you have to prove to everyone just how much of a nerd you are. And today, I'm going to do exactly that by talking about World of Warcraft for some six minutes. I've played a lot of video games over the course of my 24 years on this, on this planet, but World of Warcraft probably has been the only one that I have played continuously, well, somewhat continuously, for more than 10 years. If that sounds surprising or weird, that's because it is. I don't think there have been a lot of games that have been around as long as World of Warcraft has. At least, you know, continuously. We're not talking about, you know, World of Warcraft 1, World of Warcraft 2, in the same way, let's say, a franchise like Grand Theft Auto has been around but we're talking about a basic base game that has been relevant for more than 10 years. Now, arguably, a lot of the uh, expansion packs that have come and gone over the course of uh, these 10 years have changed the game drastically, but at its core, World of Warcraft remains very true to itself. And tomorrow, we're taking our first steps into the next chapter of World of Warcraft. Patch 8.0, Patch 8.0, the pre-launch patch for Battle for Azeroth comes out tomorrow. I'm pretty excited. I'm mostly excited because I always played World of Warcraft for its lore, for the story that it tells. I think I like it a lot because it essentially incorporates all the major story tropes that I like and makes it into one somewhat cohesive story. And it has become more cohesive over the course of years because they have been releasing the supplementary material so that the story makes sense. The only thing that has kept bringing me back into the fold have been the trailers, the cinematics that they release before each expansion where they tease what the next story is going to be. Times change. So the story in Battle for Azeroth is that we're finally going back to the roots. It's going to be old school, it's going to be Horde versus the Alliance. And we will be fighting in the beaches, we will be fighting on our ships, we will be fighting in battlegrounds as we always do. But mostly, we're going back to Orcs versus Humans. Now in case you can't tell, I've always been a big fan of Sylvanas Windrunner. She was first introduced in Warcraft 3 as the Ranger General of Silvermoon, one of the leaders of the High Elves in the Undead campaign. Arthas, who used to be the Prince of Lordaeron and then became the Lich King himself, killed Sylvanas and turned her into a Banshee. And you can see her in her full might in the cinematic for Battle for Azeroth, where she literally transforms into a Banshee and kills a bunch of Alliance soldiers before yelling FOR THE Lord! So, uh, and, and in World of Warcraft, my main character, whose name is Ajati, has always been a blood elf. And in my headcanon, it has always been the case that Ajati joins the Horde mainly because Sylvanas, who's the leader of the Forsaken, is part of the Horde. You see, he's not following the Horde that belongs to, you know, the Orcs and whatnot, but he is simply following Sylvanas. Ajati's a hunter, he's a ranger, he's probably seen through the Scourge going through Silvermoon. Finding out that she's still alive, he decides to join the Horde. I'm just realizing that this vlog is also turning into a ramble fest, but that's fine, you know? That's the kind of content that I want to create. Who's gonna judge me? There's no content police on YouTube. Oh, as I said, I like the story in World of Warcraft, and that's why I try to make sure that the way I play the game fits in with the story as well, you know? Again, that's also probably one of the reasons why I keep going back to World of Warcraft, because it's so flavorful in that the classes and the races you can pick to play as can fit into the story as well. Even if it's not written, you can make your own story. That's part of the beauty of having a role-playing game as grand as World of Warcraft. Alongside these epic stories that have been written by, you know, professional writers or whatever, your characters exist within this world as well. And in some way, Blizzard makes sure that the adventurers don't feel left out while these epic narratives are taking place. It is part of the canon that my character was one of the people who killed the Lich King. We have saved the planet from being destroyed during the Cataclysm, and more recently, we've saved the entire cosmos from the Burning Legion by defeating Sargeras. For Azeroth! And I think that's fascinating. Isn't that fascinating? This game that I've been playing for 10 years has helped me feel more important than I am. And it's that high that the game provides. It's that, it's that feeling of pseudo-importance that keeps bringing me back into this game time after time. And probably all the cool cinematics even. But that's, uh, I'm gonna talk about that later. But seriously, I could talk for hours about World of Warcraft if I had prepared better for it. You are not prepared! 
These are more train of consciousness style vlog than actually scripted things. But I should probably do more scripted things, it's just that I don't have a lot of time to do this kind of stuff. Because, you know, this is uh, like I'm my lunch break from work. Is this TMI? It's not TMI. There's no such thing as TMI. We're on the internet and I'm talking about myself. Everything I do is TMI. But you keep coming back, which is nice. What do I expect to see in Battle for Azure? Legion has been about the classes of the games. Because what happened was, since the Burning Legion was attacking the entire planet, we kind of let go of the factional differences and focus more on our classes. And the classes came together to fight the Legion. Now in Battle for Azeroth, the focus is once again going back to the factions, so much so that we have things called allied races. Some of the factions that we met during Legion, such as the Nightborn, are joining the main two factions of the game. Which leads me to believe that individual lore and narratives about these factions and the races within them are going to be a much bigger part of the story. They've released a book recently, actually, it's Before the Storm by Christy Golden, which talks about this one incident between the Forsaken and the humans. What I really would love to see is a content patch that focuses on the elves, because there is an implied tension that's happening between the, the Blood Elves, the Void Elves, and the High Elves, all of them represented by the three Windrunner systems. So I want to see a content patch that focuses on Silver Moon City, perhaps some sort of like a siege or another kind of event that happens there that relieves the tension that exists between the three Windrunner sisters. Because we've seen a like a short comic where the three sisters try to come to terms with their differences but fail miserably. So I want to see something that happens in the game. I want an excuse for us to get a updated model for Silvermoon. I want to see more lore for the elves. Do you play World of Warcraft? Will you play Battle for Azeroth? You should play Battle for Azeroth. Come play with me. I really... It would be so cool if I could come up with like a guild or something like that from this vlog out of all my 39 subscribers. If you liked me nerding out, give this video a like, share it with your friendos, leave a comment, but more importantly, or perhaps most importantly, subscribe and ring that bell so that you get a notification whenever I upload a video. So until next time, bye.